Welcome to a special edition of the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. Today's podcast is highlighted by some of this week's best Undisputed segments. Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. Welcome into Undisputed. I'm Holly Saunders here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Oh, How, what, what is oh. <laughs> How oh, was the oh, weekend? Oh. Yeah, it was good, good. Do I have to stare at that for two and a half yeah, hours? Yeah, I did a little something. Two and a half hours? Oh, I'm, come on. Are you trying to, like, distract cocktails. me? I'm going for cocktails after this. Are you? Yeah. With whom? It's going to be popular. Don't, don't worry about all this. Oh. There you go, Skip. Uh-huh. <laughs> I want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Well, uh, this heat don't calm yeah. down. Yeah. You can handle it. Handle it. South Georgia. I moved to California, yeah. not oh. Calcutta. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. 115 degrees, Skip. Come yeah. on now. I like the heat. Was I'm it doing really right that with the church. Was it really that Yeah, hot? I went to church on Sunday. Because they tell me if hell is hotter <sighs> than what it was on <sighs> Friday, I got to get right. Holly, somebody's about to turn up the heat right here, right now. Oh, you now. already done? Yeah. yeah. Oh, How you doing? Yeah. It's, good. it's good to see you. How you, you been? Mm, I'm great. Did you get my call the other day? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't call you. You don't have the phone anyway. <laughs> All right, that sounded like a threat. I like it. Let's get right into it with LeBron. He's leaving Ty Lue and the Cavs for the Lakers and Luke Walton. And apparently LeBron's old coach is giving his new coach some advice. Lou and Walton spoke in Vegas during summer league games this weekend, and they will reportedly meet today for breakfast. Lakers associate coach Brian Shaw was a teammate of Lou's, and he'll be there as well. So what do you think they'll say? Well, Lou shared some of what he'll tell Walton, saying, quote, I'll just tell them LeBron's easy. People get this whole thing built up like he's hard to coach. He's not. LeBron's not the problem. It's the outside tension that's the problem. Just puts added pressure immediately on the coaches, on his teammates. Now, everything you do is under a microscope, so it's going to be a totally different change for the Lakers. They'll be able to handle it, though. All right, Shannon, what do you make of this meeting? Hmm. Skip, there's two things can be true. Because in one hand, Le- coaching LeBron can be easy because you know what, Skip? He'll always show up. He'll always be prepared. You know he'll put the time in. That's you true. You know he'll give you your maximum effort. I give you that. you're never going to have to get that call mm-hmm. saying LeBron is out this time of night. LeBron is doing mm-hmm. that. Unless you want him to play defense, but go ahead. See, there you go. See? <laughs> I, well, it you, wasn't I, my I, turn. You, <laughs> you got always, to be honest. A little jab. I'm yes. being okay. honest. All right. But on the flip side, where it becomes difficult is tempering LeBron's expectations yep. because everything's come so easily and so naturally mm-hmm. for LeBron James. He's wondering why the other 11 guys can't do it on command like he can. Mm-hmm. Like, you got one job. Like, when LeBron, for the best, uh, since he's been back, with the exception of Kyrie, everybody had a specific job. JR, your job is to knock down open shots. We're not asking you to facilitate. We're not asking you to b- rebound. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. Tristan, all we asking you to do is rebound and play defense. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. So tempering LeBron's expectations of what his teammates are capable of. And also, as Ty Lu mentioned, what comes along with coaching and playing with LeBron James? Mm-hmm. Because he is the best player. All, uh, he is a, a Mount Rushmore player, whether you have him first, second, third, or fourth. He is one of those players, Skip. You know what comes along with that. When you have him, it's championships or bust. And everybody can't coach under that kind of scrutiny Mm -hmm. and stress. Everybody can't play under that type of scrutiny and stress. And so when you factor all that in, that he's on your team, he's a dominating presence, it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. It's also going to be tough on Luke Walton because guess what, Skip? (laughs) They, uh, They came out together. Now, Luke will command some respect because Coach, uh, Coach, LeBron loves guys that have played the game. That's why he had respect for Ty Lue. That's why he had respect for Paul Silas. Mm-hmm. But a great player is also going to ask you questions. And Skip, he expects answers on demand. And if you can't give him those answers, they're going to be a problem. Hmm. Now, it's a lot more difficult to coach LeBron James than what Ty Lue is leading on to because he's a generational player, because he's a Mount Rushmore mm-hmm. type player, but it's a blessing and a curse. But some things, showing up, being courteous, doing all the things necessary to win is easy. It's his expectations and those expectations that goes around with him that makes it a lot more difficult than probably mm. what it should be. Okay. I'm just going to say that one thing can be true. I think Luke Walton is in big trouble here. I'm going to start off with that before I get to how 
easy, quote unquote, it is to coach one LeBron James. But I thought it was bad news for Luke Walton that he did not accompany Magic Johnson to LeBron's door at on that Saturday night at 9, this time 12.01 Eastern time. If I invite you over to my house, I wish you might bring a guest. I invited you, Skip Bayless. He invited Magic, But Luke not Walton Luke. was the guest to invite no, because, no. will not Luke Walton, if in fact... Remember when Jeannie Buss defended Luke Walton at midseason under attack from LeVar Ball, and she tweeted, in Luke we trust? Yes. I don't think so. I'm not buying that now. Because it should have been more of a feeling of the the GM, the ex-superstar Magic Johnson, and his coach of the future going forward with LeBron, Luke Walton. Those are the two who needed to sit down with LeBron and say, this is our plan for you. Wouldn't LeBron want to hear something from Luke at that point? Unless Luke was expendable to this conversation, which I think he is. No, because Magic Johnson made it clear that they're going to recruit two big-name free agents, Mm -hmm. be it 2018 or 2019. They had the ability to sign two max players. They were going to get them. Whether Luke Walton wanted them or not, Magic Johnson said, we have slots for two max salary guys. If I'm Luke Walton, I don't love it that I'm not invited to that initial recruitment meeting, that, that pitch meeting. And number two... I am stunned and disappointed in Luke Walton that it appears he's desperately calling around the league seeking advice on how to deal with LeBron James. I thought Luke was more of his own man. Remember, he is the son of one of the greatest players who ever played this game, Bill Walton. I know he's a little bit of a caricature now, but if you remember him as a player, Mm -hmm. he was really, really good. And Luke grew up around that kind of aura and magnetism from his father. And Luke played for nine years with Kobe Bryant, so it's not like he hasn't been around superstars before. And now he's desperately calling Eric Spolstra. How do I do this? What, what are the quirks? What are the nuances? How, how do I manage this? Let me ask you a question. Let's just say for the sake of argument that Pat Riley was the exact same age as Magic Johnson when he got this mm-hmm. job. Do you think Magic, do you think Pat Riley would have called, reached out to anyone? Well, let's do Phil Jackson. You think Phil Jackson called around the league when he took over Shaq and Kobe in yep, 1999? He was old enough to be their dad. Okay. Luke Walton is a two is 20 is 20 months older than in LeBron. Right, but he's a, been coaching as a head coach for a couple Let's of years, really th- for three, right? With that yeah. stint in Golden State. So yep. You Phil can call Jackson. him a made man. Phil Jackson had coached how many years in Chicago before he got well, to... I, I get that. But and I'm just saying, can you imagine Phil Jackson needing any details on how to handle Shaq and Kobe after he coached Michael Jordan? I don't think so. He was a six-time champion. Okay, so he I got with it. credibility. Okay, but remember what happened, speaking of Pat Riley, that first year in Miami with LeBron. Mm-hmm. Remember, they get off to a rocky start, 9-8. Mm-hmm. and eight. Yes. There was the bumping incident on the way to the bench with Eric Spolstra. It was accidental. Shoulder to Eric. chest. It was chest. accidental. Get out of my way, coach. It was accidental. Quote, unquote, coach. Right? It was an accident, It was Skip. not an accident because, remember, even as he was pitched by Pat Riley, he asked Pat, you ever thought about stepping back down out of the GM's office and coaching? Because that, that's was, who he wanted to be coached by was Pat Riley. Was they exposed to at that meeting when he met with Pat Riley? I don't recall, but I don't think okay. so. Okay. But that, that was okay. – maybe that was – But you wanted Luke Walton. Now, he yes, goes sir. with Pat. Yes, sir. I would want Luke – if I'm Luke Walton, I want to be part Luke of Walton that. Luke Walton was there. Okay. So, uh, it's because LeBron wanted Pat Riley to be his coach, and then at 9-8, and eight, they had a little team meeting just with the three stars, Dwayne and Chris Bosh. And once again, according to Pat Riley's book, LeBron dropped the hint. He thought about stepping back down to coach. Pat right? Riley a dry snitch. Huh? Pat Riley a okay. snitch. He might All right. be a well, I'm just snitch. saying, <laughs> is it possible that in that Saturday night meeting at LeBron's Brentwood address here in the west side of Los Angeles – that Magic said, hey, if it doesn't work out immediately with Luke Walton, I'll think about coaching. Do you think LeBron asked Magic, would you coach me? Magic, it's possible. Magic tried coaching. Magic doesn't want to coach. But let me ask you a question. Okay, but just remember, it was just a disaster, short, live stand. Yes. When he went 5-11 and 11 right. in 1994, mm-hmm. is it possible at age 59 that he would say, you know what? I could do this because Magic said his heart wasn't in at that point. Right. That was a bad Laker team. Remember that team missed, ended up missing the playoffs with Vlade Divac, Nick Van Axel, aging worthy, aging Rambus. It was, it was a terrible situation. What if Magic's thinking, I can do this? 
if it doesn't start off right, I'll just step right back down and into this. Maybe Brian Shaw. I think he has somebody on the bench that he feel comfortable turning over to Brian Shaw. But the thing is, Skip, we keep making big deals about this. David Blatt was not in the meeting when Dan Gilbert got on a plane and flew to Fort Lauderdale. So this is nothing new. LeBron James rarely meets with the coach that he's going to play for before he actually has to play for them. Until they pump the balls up and they go out there for training camp, that's the first time that the coach is going to get an opportunity. You know what my takeaway is from that? For LeBron, coach is expendable. It's irrelevant. Yeah, just bring anybody in because I coach myself. I think that's how he looks no, at it. No, he does not. It's not why do, you, why do you try to make it more than what it is? Because you know, and I know, he, he inserts himself in the lineup whenever he feels like it, and he pulls himself out Westar of the game. Westar doesn't do that. Well, Michael I, Jordan I thought, went in when he couple. wanted to. I'm Magic. not sure about Michael. Kobe did, but I'm not sure about Michael. So now all of a sudden, now you want well, people. That was Phil Jackson coach. Now you want people to believe that Michael Jordan was the most coachable guy in all of professional basketball. When you and I both know that's not true. Boy, I thought Phil won over Michael because Michael was having a hard time breaking through because he wanted to go one on five. And you know what happened? Phil finally broke through and got through to Michael. You need to get everybody else involved early. Then you can take the game over. All right? I got, no, I got right? no problem with that, Skip. But so in other words, you would like for me to believe that, Mike, that uh, Phil Jackson had more control over Michael Jordan than he had over Kobe Bryant because you said Kobe chucked himself in and took, checked himself out whenever he wanted to. Is that what you'd like for me to believe? I think that didn't happen until Shaq was gone. I think early on, remember, Kobe was 18 years old when Phil took over coaching, mm -hmm. so, okay, so what? You know, is he going to just take himself in and out? No, he's not at that age. But after Shaq's gone and Kobe took over Los Angeles, then I think it started happening at that point. But in this case... I think Luke Walton is on, at best, borrowed time. And there are lots of other candidates out there. I think Coach Krzyzewski is a possibility at some point. He ain't leaving Duke in the uh, middle of the season. Well, at some point, is he just what, – what else is there for him to accomplish at Duke? Seriously, nothing. But, nothing. That's he, but, he, but he loved that, Skip. He, he loved that aspect of it. He, I mean, that, the Lakers have tried to get Coach, uh, uh, Coach K before, offered him $8, 9000000 million. Mm -hmm. But when you can go there and you're still going to get the top – of the top ten players – Probably four of them will end up at Kentucky because mm -hmm. they know they're going to be one and done. Yep. It's a great system because he's had great success with the one and dones. It makes no sense for him to leave. And he's the king. He's the king, Skip. He comes there, he's going to be a guy. You got you to you earn your stripes all over again. Okay, he don't want LeBron that has been coached by him before. Yes. And LeBron loves him and respects him. So that's a possibility. Is it long shot possibility Phil Jackson would come back out of retirement? I don't think so because his body had broken down to the point where he couldn't fly anymore. Right. So he wants an 82 game schedule. I, I don't see that. And he and Jeannie obviously had ended their yeah. relationship. Jeannie says she don't want to mm -hmm. see his face. Okay, so that's possible. That's what she said. All right, and I'm going to throw one other possibility out there. <laughs> I think LeBron came to love Larry Drew, who was sitting on that bench next to Ty Lue. And remember when Ty Lue had to take his sabbatical? Larry Drew went eight and ones, easy to do with the LeBron team, but still, Larry Drew was a longtime Laker assistant and, and was assistant through Magic's brief coaching stint from 92 all the way up to 99, so seven years. Right. Head coach in Atlanta over two playoff teams, also head coach in Milwaukee. Milwaukee. So he has the credentials mm -hmm. to do this. I think LeBron would respect Larry Drew more than he would respect Luke Walton. That's just me. I, I think the thing is when you're dealing with any great player, Skip, you automatically set boundaries. And I think the one thing that Ty, Ty Lue did that gained LeBron respect is that they called a timeout and LeBron was trying to talk in the huddle and T. Lue says, shut the bleep up. I got this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Luke will come on that strong, but you need to set boundaries. Because I'm mm -hmm. sure LeBron will voice his opinion and says, okay, but Luke, uh, Luke Walton needs to say, LeBron, in this situation, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. You have, With anything, Skip, because he understands that he's a great player. He understands that he's a dominating voice, not only in huddles, but in that locker room. But you got to establish those boundaries. Mm. Because at the end of the day, no matter what you think of him, he's not Red Auerbach. He's not Pop. He's not uh, 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 Pat Riley. But he's still the head coach, and you're still the player. Although you are a great player, you still have to show respect to the head coach. So I'm going to remind you that Ty Lu had so much control. He had everything so secure in his coaching world 
that he came completely apart last year and had to take two weeks off to try to save himself, right? Yeah, I don't blame him, Skip. Well, you know the pressure. This is hard, man. Yeah! This is really hard. Yeah. And he blamed it on outside tension generated by the media. The outside tension from the media is generated internally by the drama king, who is LeBron James. I have never seen anything like it. On a daily, nightly basis, he will either tweet something or say something to the media that will detonate all kinds of... What, what does that mean? All, all kinds of analysis. Because you're trying to psychoanalyze him from a distance. Yeah. Me, I don't give it a passing thought. Oh, yeah. look at it, bro. That was cute. Oh, and I keep it cute? moving. Yeah, I just keep yeah. it moving. I'm sure you, the locker room thinks it's cute. You, on your couch, you lay back. You try to, you, instead of him having his feet up on your couch, you got your feet up on your own couch. Like, mm -hmm. okay, let me parse this. What mm. did he mean by this? Was he talking about Kevin Love? Is he talking about JR? No. That's what Ty Lu is doing. That's what Dan Gilbert was doing. That's what the whole locker room was doing well, they ain't in Cleveland. Do it no more. Well, that's right. But this guy is hard because he's just a constant turmoil creator. It's just, it's just because LeBron's not happy unless there's turmoil. He feeds off the turmoil. I disagree. You know that. No. Yes, you do. No. And if you're going to coach LeBron, you, you have to be prepared for what's going to come because things are going to happen. LeBron is going to pull himself out of game seven going into the fourth quarter and mysteriously just go to the locker room. It's just going to happen. Hey, Skip, you have to coach it. through that. Skip, stop saying that it just happened. You know LeBron James, so all of a sudden, out of the blue, there's nothing wrong with him. Stop it, Skip. You know the I, man. I don't know what happened, but this is just this because has happened you don't consistently in his career. It's just the whole LeBron package. Obviously, an all-time great player, but you have to be able to deal with that moment, and then you definitely have to deal with what happened at the end of Game One regulation of the the recent NBA Finals because he melted down and threw a tantrum on the bench. You have to be able to be ready to manage that situation because that's who he is. If you don't mind me asking, if we were to give our every coach true serum, if we were to ask Pat Riley, mm -hmm. was it easy to coach Magic and Kareem? If we asked uh, KC Jones, was it easy to, or Bill Fitch, was it easy to coach Larry Bird? Mm -hmm. If we ask some of the all-time great players, mm -hmm. if it was easy to create to uh, coach great talents, what do you think they would say? So what makes LeBron James different? See, you would like people to believe that although LeBron James is a great player, he's uniquely different in his ability to be coached than some of the other all-time great players. And that's certainly not true. There was no social media in those days. Do, do you really think Larry Bird generated one controversy after another? I don't remember any. And listen, I covered Michael Jordan. I'm here to tell you, never any controversy. He didn't want to talk to that's the media. Not, it, it's like he would not, do his post game, but he didn't want to do day to day. Has, coaching LeBron James has nothing mm -hmm. to do with the media. I'm asking you, if you ask those coaches, was it easy to coach these great players? What do you think they would say? Exclude social media. I'm talking about the one on one interaction between a great player and a coach. Do you think they would say it was difficult? A simple no or a simple yes? I think Phil Jackson would tell you it was easy to coach Michael Jordan. Came every day, 1,000 miles an hour, absolute basketball killer. I, I don't know what more you could want than that. Did Coach you, on the floor, I, I don't know. Every person that you've ever heard talk about LeBron James, they talk, his teammates, his coaches, talk about how hard he prepares sure, and practice I got that. and how he works on his craft. The very same thing that you just said about uh, uh, Michael Jordan. I know, but LeBron works very hard on his self-promotion on Twitter. That's what he works at also. Equally hard. Can I and it's, it's to the detriment of the basketball team because that's hard to, to manage on a daily basis. Almost every day Do we're, we're doing something on the show. We open the show with, you won't believe what LeBron tweeted last night. I believe it. Huh? Because he's trying to get those other guys motivated. Okay. But and it's it always passive-aggressive. It's always between the lines. What does that mean? I love we that. have to sit back and wonder and speculate. What did so, he mean? If you Just say it. Grab him around the throat and say if it. You don't, if you don't mind me asking, what would social media have said when Michael Jordan socked Steve Kerr in the eye or when he punched Will Perdue? Was that controversy? Did he not motivate by fear? Oh, so now yeah. that's motivation. You see what I'm saying, Holly? You see, when Michael Jordan can do no wrong, he punches the guy in the face and he's motivating. I tell you what he would have done if that had been Shea Sharp, he'd have motivated himself into an ass whipping. Mm. That's what happened with O'Shea Sharp. You know what? You finally crossed the line. <laughs> you would have gotten yours kicked. Whoa!
kicked Skip. by a man who's just bigger than you Skip. are. Bigger than you are Skip. and at, at least as strong Skip. as you are, Skip. if not stronger. Skip. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about somebody you would have to kill to whip, and I don't think Skip. you would want to go to that Skip. point. Skip, I love Michael. You know how many pairs of shoes <laughs> I got of Michael. But I promise you. Baddest man in the history of I, sports. I promise Baddest you. Baddest man. On Michael Jordan's best day, he didn't want none of this medicine. I, I, listen, he... <laughs> He, he would t make you swallow your own medicine. Yep. Yes, he would. Skip, this He'd hold medicine. you on the ground and be pouring the medicine, medicine down your skip. throat. You say, oh, no, stop it. Skip. Stop, I'm skip. out. I'm out. Skip. Skip. skip this medicine right here called insomnia. I'm sorry. This medicine right here called insomnia. But you finally, I'm with you on every Night fight you have proposed on this show until it. now. No. And you finally crossed the line. You can't do you, this you, one. Skip, if you know what, if you say, you know what, I Chef? need you. I need you as a partner. Don't even think about this no, anymore. No, I, I done got too This old. is I instant too, death. No, I done got too old now. Now, if you just say, well, Shannon, I don't know now. You're talking about, you, you know, you're talking about tussling with Oh, mm -hmm. That might be a different story. Hey. But Mike, <sighs> man. Uh, what about you and LeBron? Who could? Nah, nah, nah. Me and LeBron. Me LeBron, and LeBron. Hey, time out. LeBron's a lover, not a fighter. Oh, LeBron got the mitts. LeBron got the mitts for you. Have any mitts yes, for he anybody. does. He doesn't want to. Skip. Please. You have to understand. LeBron is in a different place in his life now. The man is mad. Got three kids. I, I got He's it. not trying to set that example. He was but never sometimes, trying to set that example. Sometimes people try to cross him, and you know, he's like, "Hey, okay, now, don't make me show you that side." <sighs> But Skip, you need to stop. Have you ever seen that side? Yeah, yeah. I've seen it from Mike a bunch of times. But, but here's the thing, though, Skip. All I'm saying is, is that Luke Walton. I commend Luke because a lot of guys. Cause think about it. To reach out and says, "Okay, I don't know everything." Everybody doesn't get an opportunity. If you're lucky, you get an opportunity to coach one of these great players in your lifetime. If you're lucky, sometimes you get like Pat Riley, you get two of them at the same time. You get Kareem and Magic. But very, very seldom do you get an opportunity to coach a transcendent figure. Hmm. And when you're as young as he is, if, if, if Luke Walton would say 55, I don't believe he'd have reached out. But when you're 35 or 36 and you're coaching that guy, you need to, okay, how, what's he like? Hmm. When he gets, I mean, will, will I know when he gets upset? I mean, will he come talk to me? Can I oh, have my door open where I can ask him to come talk to me? He just needs to know that, Skip. I don't look at it as a drawback. I don't say, well, he's succumbing. He's bowing down to, uh, to uh, LeBron. I don't look at it like that. I look at it as a guy reaching out, wanting mm. to be great mm. from some of the guys that's had interaction with him as a head coach. What's it like? Luke is going to be coaching on eggshells. He's going to be coaching game to game because that's how long he might last. Yeah. And after game one, he's liable to pull LeBron aside and say, how'd I do? How'd I do? Mm. That's well, no good. You well, can't do it that way. No, but Skip, when you're coaching these type of guys mm -hmm. and you don't have the credibility, Pat Riley and, and Phil Jackson, you know, when Phil started coaching Shaq and Kobe, mm -hmm. he had six titles. They had no choice but to listen. It's automatic, Skip, in my sport, like Coach Belichick. When you go there, he has credentials. Mike Tomlin has credentials. Pete Carroll has credentials. And now when you get those credentials, you will get everybody's utmost attention, everybody's utmost respect. That's just the way it works. Hmm. LeBron James won't be a problem. LeBron James by that action, boss. He about winning. Coach James. If you, if you, hmm. His name is LeBron James. Coach He's a player. James. You need to put some Leia. respect on the man's yeah. name too, Skip. Well, hmm. Speaking of the LeBron drama, how would all of you at home feel if someone broke up with you via Instagram? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, LeBron pulled really? this move. Whatever. Oh, Should the on. Cavs be upset? That's coming up next. Stick around. Holly, you need to stop it too. No mercy. LeBron agreed to a max deal with the Lakers last week, but he did not personally tell Cavs GM Kobe Altman. Yeah, instead it was LeBron's agent, Rich Paul. And when Paul told Altman, it was after Clutch Sports had already announced on Instagram that LeBron was heading to L.A. Despite all that, Altman said he's not bitter about the move. But Shannon, I don't like this move. I don't like it at all. How do you <laughs> feel about how your man handled this? Normally when someone tells you they're not something, Skip, what are they? The bitter. <laughs> Man, it ain't, about, it ain't even about the money. It's about the money. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, I don't really know what else LeBron can do. They didn't like the decision. They didn't like that when he had the op-ed with Lee Jenkins and Sports Illustrated. They didn't like this. So how should he have done it that would have appeased? Short of him staying in a Cavaliers uniform, Skip, I don't believe there's anything. Because at the end of the day, if the end result is the same, does it make it different? Uh, Dan Gilbert, you got an opportunity that very few people get. 
you had an opportunity twice mm -hmm. at arguably the greatest player to ever play. Now, we skip and I, we go back and forth. I think he is, you think he is, but he's a Mount Rushmore player. You had an opportunity to have, you had him twice and you let him go. So ask yourself, what could I have done differently? So LeBron James not only wanted to move the first time, but when I got him back, he wanted to leave me again. What could I have done mm -hmm. differently? Yep. At some point in time, Dan Gilbert's going to have to face the fact. Now, all of a sudden, you want LeBron James to tell you something. What about Kyrie? Told you not to trade Kyrie, you didn't listen. Told you to trade that pick for DeAndre Jordan, you didn't listen. So you want to do, and plus the fact it's been reported, you said you wanted your team back. You got your team. You get an opportunity, you and Col uh, uh, Colby Altman, you guys get to build your team, a championship cal uh, caliber team, and LeBron James will get no credit. Because I'm sure you're sitting back like, hey, I'm paying all this money, but LeBron's getting all this credit. I need to get some credit also. So guess what? Starting now, moving forward, be it good, bad, and indifferent. Dan Gilbert, Kobe Altman, that's your team. You get to build a team the way you want it. Hmm. You want to uh, uh, scope it like Golden State? Have at it. You want bigs? Have at it. Do whatever you need. LeBron's gone. Skip, I don't really know what else. Le what should he have called him a week? Once he opted out, that should have been a good indication that he was uh, <clears throat> hmm. probably not hmm. going to be returning. Well, you don't know that. He could have gone back in for one and one like Kevin Durant did Gold State. So it's not the end of the world, but this was. And I'm sorry. It's going to sound like I'm piling on, but I did not know this was the way that they were informed until I read Kobe Altman's first interview about it on Friday after our show on Friday. So this is my first crack at this, and I just find it offensive and downright classless that LeBron and company broke this news on their social media sites, Twitter and Instagram, before they had the decency to just call somebody. I don't expect LeBron to call Dan Gilbert because right. obviously that bridge right. was burned. But for Rich Paul or Maverick Carter, whoever, maybe even LeBron, to call Kobe Altman, it seemed like LeBron got along pretty well with Kobe. Yes. Kobe did everything in his young power yes. to make it His right, limited power. Right? It was limited. I, I buy that. He was just the point person for right. Dan Gilbert. But in the end, there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. And look, the bad blood started, remember, at, after the first decision, when LeBron didn't call Dan Gilbert, when they seemed to be doing okay. Mm -hmm. Remember, he had to break it on TV, right. you know, the, 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 and, and he called, I don't know if LeBron called Dan Gilbert, now I can't remember. I think maybe he did. It was right before, it was right before the, okay. the announcement, right? It, it was just a moment before, yes. but, but Dan Gilbert didn't like it. He didn't like the way it was handled. He didn't like the way they were treated in the process after he'd gone way out of his way to do everything in his power to make it right for LeBron the first go-around right. in Cleveland. And then, of course, Dan Gilbert just went off. And that's what I use my 24-hour rule, just sleep on it and let it lay for a while. And he just went straight to the keyboard and went. He did. And he just nuked LeBron James and accused him of quitting in that final series that they lost to Boston in the, was it the conference semifinal, I believe, before his, you know, that ended his first go-around in Cleveland. Correct. Okay, so I'm going to remind you, over the last three years, Dan Gilbert spent nearly $130 million in luxury tax to make it as right as he could for LeBron. Now, right. that included LeBron wanting the max each of those years. Right. But to give LeBron as much help as possible beyond the max that LeBron was taking, he spent nearly $130 million in luxury tax over budget. I'm going to also remind you that over the last three years, the 29 other owners spent a grand total, all 29 of them, of $131 million in luxury tax. So Dan Gilbert nuked the whole field in luxury tax. you got to give him some credit for that. He was trying. He was doing the best he could to surround LeBron with whatever he could. Maybe he didn't make the right basketball decision every time, but... Pocketbook decision, boy, he was. Oh, he spent. He was breaking the I, bank, I, I will man. give him that. Skip, for me, I think this thing started going awry. Now, I don't know who, but it's hard for me to believe. For Kyrie Irving to find out that the Cavaliers were shopping him, it had to be somebody in that very meeting. 
Now, I'm not going to call no names, but the general manager is no longer there. Skip, it's hard for me to believe that we can have internal discussions. Me, you, you and I having discussions. All of a sudden, it gets out. Somebody told it, Skip. Either you did or I did. Okay. It got out. All that right. was the be that was the really the beginning of the end because I'm not so sure had Kyrie been there that LeBron could have found a better situation. But knowing what but we're also starting to hear is that Kyrie wanted out after the championship and that his team almost asked for a trade after the championship. Well, there's a reason story that Kyrie never really wanted to play with LeBron in the, the first beginning. place. Okay. So with that all that being okay. said, Skip, so maybe even if Kyrie there, LeBron says, you know what? I fought this as long as I could. There's only so much you can suppress on the court, in the gym, in the locker room before it's just time to go. Skip is tough. I, I, I'll give you that. Given what they've done, what he spent, um, Rich probably, uh, uh, Rich Paul probably could have given Kobe Altman a day's notice. Yeah. Uh, even a, so, it, that's that's good enough. And, and now, just ask them. Hey, we would like to break the story. Is that okay? You'd have right. to trust that they would have let you break the story, which right. I think they would have. Right. But they would just appreciate that you did this yes. the right way. Yeah, I, I, I give you that, Skip. You know what? Looking back, maybe give them a give them a day's notice. Give them twenty four hours. And say, you know what, guys? Uh, unfortunately, LeBron has decided to move on. Uh, he will not be rejoining the Cavaliers. We're going in a different direction. We ask mm -hmm. that you sit on this. We would like to break it. Um, and sometimes, you know, Skip, maybe they didn't trust that they weren't – because, you know, LeBron likes to control his own I, narrative now. I got it. So maybe that has something to do with it. But you know what? I'm, I don't normally agree with you, but they should. he should have given them at least – This is a first on Undisputed. He should have given them a day. He should have yeah, given them a day. I, I'll give you that. I'm going to give Shannon Sharp give an ovation. Give, Way give to go. him a day. Way to go, Shannon. Whew. All the way around. That was the right thing to I'd do. Have, and I'd, the classy thing to I'd do. I'd have called Kobe Altman. Right. Well, I ain't calling Dan Gibbard. Yeah. I'd have called Dan Gibbard. See? But he wouldn't have liked what I'd have called him. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> but I would have called Kobe. I would have had Richie uh, uh, call Kobe Altman. Says, look, we're going in a different direction. I'd give him 24 hours. We're going in a different direction. Mm -hmm. We will not be returning. So mm. we appreciate everything that you did for us. But at this point in time, LeBron feels it's better that he go, mm. to, go in a different direction. Mm. That's how I would have handled it. Now, you're the bigger man than LeBron James. That's impressive. Well, first of all, I would have never gone back. Mm. You can't, you can't. F I'm with you on that. You, you can't if, call if me. I, if I'm in LeBron's shoes, yeah. I'm not yeah. going back yeah. to Dan yeah. Gilbert after yeah. you did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would have never been Bridge back. burned to the ground. So that was the, if you come back after that, I believe you probably could have given him a 24-hour grace period and says, hey, I'm moving on. Surprised that LeBron didn't tell you, though. Like, oh, you know, you know, LeBron. Were you hurt that he took to Instagram before telling you, Shannon? No, nah, you know, I had something, you know. <laughs> I, I had, a, had a feeling something was going on. The, the other problem that just might have happened, I smell something on fire. It could be the bridge between Shannon and LeBron. Oh, me and Bron, well, good. I don't me know. Bron, good. I don't know. Me and Bron, good. You smell that smoke? <laughs> Open it night. I smell smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Open at night. I'm going to be one of them old heads, a 50-year-old with a throwback on. I'm going to have on me a bronze really? jersey. Up, yep, I'm going to Staples. Yeah. No, we going to Staples. We yeah, are not as, going to as, Staples. As a, as we, skip. We, we are going to Staples. <laughs> we are not going to Staples. We are going to Staples. I'm going yeah. to Staples. You and Jack Nicholson. Yeah, yeah me and Jack. No mercy. Rob Gronkowski is still a Patriot, but that might not be the case when the season starts. Gronk is reportedly working on a new deal in New England, but an anonymous AFC executive said, quote, until that's done, I still think he's available. Pro Football Talk reported that the Patriots were calling teams for a trade for Gronk leading up to the draft. And Gronk's contract was believed to be the reason he missed some of the Patriots' offseason program. Shannon, how surprised are you that Gronk is still available? I'm very surprised considering, Skip, that we're two weeks away from most teams being a, be heading to training camp. I would have thought this was something that would have happened if it was going to happen. It would happen at the start of free agency or at least by the draft. Coach Belichick, normally he wheels and deals. He likes draft picks. He could have got something for him. Still doesn't mean it couldn't happen. But I'm surprised mm -hmm. that we're still talking about Gronk um, possibly being on the trade block. And, Skip, I've always felt um, that this was a ploy in order to get his contract redone. I believe Gronk has outperformed his contract. Mm -hmm. So he should have, it, should have it renegotiated. Because I'm of the belief, if you underperform and a team can release you, if you overperform that contract, they should, you know, fairly recompensate you for that. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Skip, Coach Belichick is from the old school. He believed once a player starts talking about retirement, 
well, mentally they're retired. Mm -hmm. And Coach Belichick doesn't like to be caught or left holding the bag. He normally gets the drop on players. Mm -hmm. He normally moves on from them before mm -hmm. they're able to move on from him. And when, when uh, um, Gronk put this series of events in motion, well, I don't know. They asked him after the Super Bowl. He's like, I don't know him after, you know, my body, talk to my family. Coach Belichick, oh, so you think about retiring? Uh-huh. Hmm. So that put a series of events or chain of events in motion in Coach Belichick's mind. Well, I need to, you know, if you're not going to retire on me and not have me get anything for you, I can move you. I believe this is a ploy on, on Gronk's part to get a contract extension, but it's also he's pushing back, Skip. He's upset that, you know, this all came to a head when Coach Belichick took away some of the, the privileges of the trainer, Alex yeah. Guerrero, mm -hmm. who works with Tom Brady, yeah. who also now works with Gronk. This started the series of events that led us to where we are right now, mm -hmm. Skip. All that started with that. And then obviously the Jimmy Garoppolo, so forth and so on. But I'm shocked, Skip, that we're having this conversation two weeks before training camp yep. about Gronk potentially still being on the trading block. I'm stunned by this. <laughs> and I also believe that this trade is still on the front burner, not on the back burner, but on the front. And I'm going to remind you, about a month ago, there was a report up in New England, which was shot down by the Patriots PR staff. Yeah. But it said that there were offers on the table for Gronkowski yeah. from the Titans and the 49ers, both teams with connections to Belichick, Correct. obviously, and that when Tom Brady got wind of those offers on the front burner, he went to Mr. Kraft and he threatened to retire if Bill Belichick was allowed to trade Rob Gronkowski. Now, again, that was shot down completely by the PR staff, but I believe there's some, if not a whole lot of truth to that. Yes. And here we go again. We have Belichick versus Brady and ultimately versus Kraft. Correct. And once again, we know what happened at the trade deadline. Mr. Kraft intervened for the first time ever. Finally put his foot down. He did. And he slapped Bill Belichick on the wrist and said, nope, I'm sorry. I'm making this football decision this time. You will trade Jimmy G. Mm -hmm. You will not go forward with Jimmy G next year as your Jimmy Garoppolo as your starting quarterback. In place of Tom Brady, you will not force Tom Brady into the sunset and out the back door. Mm -hmm. And Brady won that round, right? Yeah. And it feels like... Brady is being threatened again with this trade. And so now we got the power struggle between Belichick and Bob Kraft. Who's going to win this one? Well, it sounds like he, he lost the first round of it about a month ago. He did. But if you look true. at Coach Belichick, Skip, he's taking a page out of Jerry Krause's book. They couldn't force Michael out, so what did they do? They started removing pieces from around him. They did. Okay, we're going to get rid of Phil. We're going to get rid of Scottie Pippen. Now what you going to do? Well, Michael was dug in on, hey. you, you, you get rid of my, you replace hey. my coach, you're going to have to replace me. Exactly. So Coach Belichick says, okay, I'm going to get rid of Gronk, I'm going to get rid of this one, and then what are you going to do? Because mm. I'm not so sure that, I, I don't believe Coach Belichick wanted to uh, ask for Josh McDaniel, oh, Josh, come back. He knew Josh was going to get this job, Skip. That's a good that, point. I that agree was, with that. That was a, a, that, that, a Mr. Kraft. That was significant. Yes, mm -hmm. because then he really would have had a stranglehold on this. Mm -hmm. If Josh McDaniel accepts this job at the Colts, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden, and, and, and Tom Brady says, well, Mr. Kraft, if he trades uh, a Gronk, I'm out of here. If he's at the Colts, uh, Josh McDaniel's at the Colts, mm -hmm. he trades Jimmy G, I mean, not Jimmy G, mm -hmm. he trades Gronk. Gronk. What's Brady going to do? There you go. So now that's what he's doing. He's like, yep. okay, you won't go on your own. Mm -hmm. I'm going to remove every hedge I possibly can from, mm -hmm. around, from around you yep. and force your hand. That is correct. And what does the Hall of Fame tight end Shannon Sharp repeatedly tell me about Rob Gronkowski? Best receiving weapon, yes. weapon in the National Football League. I believe League. he's the best non-quarterback on the offensive side of football. I can make a case he's the best non-quarterback in all of football, be it offense or defensive player. So, That's how so, dominant so he is. This is significant Absolutely. to Tom Brady. This would feel, once again, to Tom Brady a little, I'd use that word, sabotage yes. Like you're, you're trying to make make it virtually impossible for me to succeed next year. You're taking my best weapon and away. Edelman's gone for the first four, Skip. First four. All of a sudden, I got to throw to Malcolm Mitchell or yeah. Cordero Patterson or I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, it's just a, a no cast No No Edelman. Uh, Amendola is not yeah. in Miami. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, 
Can Bill Belichick argue to Robert Kraft using the Branch Rickey theory? Remember, Branch Rickey was the GM of the Brooklyn Dodgers who gave Jackie Robinson the, the opportunity to break the color barrier. But Branch Brick, Rickey always said, you need to trade a player one year before you believe you should. Correct. So you have to force yourself to see the future. And is the future of Rob Gronkowski as he approaches 30? He's 29 now, but he's approaching 30. And you know and I know he's missed a whole bunch of games. A lot of yeah. pounding. Uh, he's he's played 102 of 128 regular season games, and he's played 13 of 19 playoff games. And obviously, Tom Brady did manage to win three playoff games a year ago and win the Super Bowl against the Falcons with no Rob Gronkowski, right? Yeah. Okay, so can you argue the Branch Rickey theory to – Mr. Kraft, like, I, I need to do this from a football building perspective. Well, here's the thing, Skip. Are you good? Let's just say for the sake of argument, you don't give him the contract. You don't do anything with his contract now. Do you plan on moving forward with him in the future? Because if you're not, go ahead and do it now. If you're not going to give him the contract because of what he has to still have mm -hmm. this year and another year on the contract, if you're not going to extend him, what are you doing? Because you're going to be right back in the same situation again. Mm. So my thing is either you extend him make him happy, or you move on without it. Mm -hmm. I don't believe you make him play under these circumstances this year with the hopes of, well, he'll be okay, and then we'll do something next year. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to play well with Gronk and his and his team. Mm -hmm. So if, if if Coach Belichick is looking at, like, we're going to move on after this year anyway, I think it's, a, it's better to move on a year earlier as okay. opposed to a year later. So now we have a clash of priorities between Brady and Belichick because yes. obviously Brady is not getting any younger, so no. he's going to play at 41, but he's coming off an MVP, and I'm sure he'd like to win another MVP at Correct. 41. And I'm sure he'd like to get back to and win another Super Bowl at age 41. But again, his window is starting to close. Correct. So he needs Rob Gronkowski now. He doesn't need to know that you traded him for draft picks so that you can make us better three or four years from now, right? Right. Okay? And you, he, you know what? Belichick could be right. There could be diminishing returns if you give Gronkowski a three-year deal, right? Mm -hmm. Year two and three, I don't know. I don't know how healthy he can stay. He's had everything go wrong. Yeah. He's had back, Elbow, knee, knee, everything, yeah. right? Yeah. Forearm. Okay, but... Tom Brady needs Rob Gronkowski now. Yes. And I say I'm going to bet on Tom Brady to win this one. So I say Rob Gronkowski will be a Patriot going forward this year, just this year. Right. But you're going to have to give him some kind of deal, yeah. right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you would think that maybe they turned that roster bonus into a signing bonus. It's just yeah. hard for me to believe, Skip, that we're going to be back in the same situation again next year without the situation being resolved this year. Mm. Coach Belichick, the, we've had more scandal, and I, I guess scandal is a bad word, but we've had more conversations this offseason about the Patriots than we had in the previous 15 years. Especially what the, Tom Brady said this and Mr. Kraft's mm -hmm. buttonhead with, with Coach Belichick. Yeah, we've had this, we had the Tom Brady skip, the deflate gate. We had that going on, but that was Tom Brady's situation. Mm -hmm. This wasn't about Coach Belichick and Tom or Coach Coach Belichick and Mr. Kraft or Coach Belichick and Gronk. This was Tom Brady dealing with his issue. Coach Belichick made it abundantly clear. I don't know about no football. Mm -hmm. Y'all go ask Tom. Yeah. So I, I, I don't want no part of this. Hey, yeah. that's all Tom's doing. So we haven't seen anything like mm -hmm. this in this totality I, I dealing agree. with the Patriots. So what are the two model franchises in sports? It's the San Antonio Spurs and the New England Patriots, yes. and they've modeled each other after each other. Mm -hmm. they've, they've actually spent time with each Correct. other to see how they do business. Right. And here's the, they're both now troubled organizations for very different reasons because right. this one, New England, is troubled internally. Right. The other one just has a player that they took a long shot on in the draft who was not anywhere near what he became, and right. then all of a sudden he went south on right. them, and they don't know what to do with it because they've never had a superstar player, a potential superstar, right. suddenly just say, I'm out. I want out of here. The thing is, but Tom is giving a little pushback too. Like, you know what? Mm, that Patriot way... Kind of like the, I like kind of like the TV twelve method mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. I kind of like doing my own thing. You know, I can do my thing in in, in Cutter. I can do my thing on a yacht in Monaco. I don't mm -hmm. really need to be here. So we're starting to see him push back a little bit, Skip. We are where we had never seen this before. Mm -hmm. Not be, you know, hey, okay, yeah, he's had previous engagements, I'm sure, but to be openly and blatantly with it on social media, throwing a football from a camel's back, or riding, excuse me, riding a camel, mm -hmm. or throwing a football from a yacht in Monaco. We don't normally see Tom Brady be this openly 
-hmm. Forget you, Coach Belichick. Mm -hmm. This is what I think of your OTAs. This is what I think that of the Patriots' way. No, I agree. They They're are big, giant foam finger. They are finger. at odds. Yes. That, this is a cold war between Belichick and Brady. And I'm not sure, again, we got a ways to go before we have to pick what's going to happen next year, but I'm starting not to love their chances because of this. Can they rise above this? Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, oh they can. Um, because they do the best job of compartmentalizing yeah. whatever the situation Maybe. is. For them to, to, to go to and win the Super Bowl after Tom misses four games, Skip, that's unbelievable. The, the issues that they have, Edelman goes down, they got back to the Super Bowl. Gronk goes down, they go, they go to and they win the Super Bowl. So this team compartmentalized better than any team in professional sports mm -hmm. maybe ever have been able to. Yeah. Agreed. Hope you're right. <laughs> no mercy. All right, next up, Aaron Rodgers is very good. We already knew this, but Pro Football Talk told us just how good. They wrote an article showing how good Rodgers is at not throwing interceptions. He has the lowest interception rate for any quarterback in history, and he's never thrown more than 13 picks in a season. They write that if Rodgers plays until he's 50 and throws 14 interceptions every year, he'll still have fewer career picks than Brett Favre. Shannon, how impressive is this? It's extremely impressive, Skip, when you look at today's game and how much they throw the football. In years past, or or he had a name like Check Down Alex. I feel bad for giving him that name, Check Down mm -hmm. Alex Smith. But he does not like interception, Skip, so he's willing to check the ball down to the line of scrimmage mm -hmm. to make sure it's not in harm's way. Well, Aaron Rodgers is throwing the ball down the field. Skip, he has 313 touchdowns and 78 picks. I'm going to give you a look, because I like to give context, Alex. Mm -hmm. He became a starter in 2008. Tony Romo, in that same time, has 85 INTs. Tony Romo hadn't started a game in two years. The dude has fewer interceptions than Mark Sanchez, who came in a year after Aaron Rodgers became the starter in Green Bay. Yep. Let that sink in for just mm -hmm. a second. Skip, this is unbelievable, the way he throws the football. In a minimum of 1,500 attempts, he's the only guy that has a 4-to-1 mm -hmm. touchdown interception ratio. Brady is as great as Brady's been. Brady, Brady's only 3, to, three, uh, three I think, 3.02-to-1, mm -hmm. which, yeah. which is great. Which is great. Mm-hmm. But that's third best. Skip, do you know if I told you, what if I told you, Skip, the guy that has the, of a minimum of 1,500 attempts, attempts, what guy has the second best I, touchdown to INT ratio? I guess nobody at home could tell me. The guy doesn't even have a job. Colin Kaepernick. Mm. Has the second greatest, a minimum of 1,500 attempts, Skip. He has the second greatest touchdown to INT. Mm. Doesn't have a job. Hmm. But back to Rodgers. By the way, he beat Aaron Rodgers in a playoff game. Twice. At Aaron Rodgers. He beat, Twice. Beat him and, at home and beat him away. And hung 181 mm -hmm. rushing yards. But, Skip, mm -hmm. let's, not, let's, let's not get too mm -hmm. far from it. Mm -hmm. The mere fact that the guys only had double-digit interceptions twice in his career. His first year starting, he threw 13 and hadn't approached that number since. Mm -hmm. We've seen the guy throw for 45 touchdowns, four or five picks. And it's, I mean, seven straight years of fewer than 10 interceptions, Skip, that's unheard of. Mm -hmm. With the amount these guys throw the ball. And, and look, we look at Andrew Luck. He throws the ball. He's a turnover machine. Big Ben Roethlisberger, Skip, he puts up big numbers, but he's a turnover machine. For Aaron Rodgers to throw the ball as much as he does and not put it in harm's way because you know between the destination, I mean the journey and the destination, mm -hmm. a lot of things can happen. It can get tipped at the line of scrimmage. It can slide through the receiver's hands. It caroms off. The, Skip, we've seen funny things happen. Somehow he's been able to guard against that. This is unbelievable. Like I said, I played with Dan, uh, uh, played against Dan Marino, went to a Pro Bowl with him. I thought he was the most gifted thrower of the football I had ever seen until I saw this young man. Skip, nobody. He's, he's not that young anymore, but go ahead. Well, he's young to me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, this, but this young man mm -hmm. can spin the ball as good as anybody ever. I it, believe it, he's the greatest thrower of the football ever. The greatest thrower this side of Tom Brady. No, no, no. Tom can't see this guy. Yeah. Tom can't see this guy throwing the football. Skip. It's no knock on Tom. Skip, it's okay. Tom is very accomplished. This but Tom can't so do wrong. what this young man can do. This is so wrong. This dude's special. I will give you that Aaron Rodgers has a lower interception rate than Tom Brady. And what exactly does that prove, Mr. Sharp, I ask you? If he had a what does it matter? If he'd had a defense like Tom Brady, he'd uh, have like four or five. He'd have like five uh, Super Bowls right really? now. I care about results, and the results tell me that Tom Brady is in a whole nother echelon from Aaron Rodgers as a winning 
quarterback, as a clutch playmaker. Because if you want to talk about winning rate as opposed to interception rate, I'll take Tom Brady. If you want to talk about clutch playmaking rate in fourth quarters of Super Bowls, I'm going to take Tom Brady okay. because it ain't even close. Let's just start with this. Tom Brady has taken his team to 12 AFC championship games and won eight of them. That's unheard of. That's outrageous. Kind of like LeBron great. James, huh? Mm. Well, eight out of 12, it's not three and six in the – Whoa, season. whoa, 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 eight out of 12. Okay, but Tom Brady's five and three in the Super Bowl, so that's not three and six. No, I'm but just – You I'm, shouldn't have done that. I, I'm it was just a say, mistake I'm just part. saying uh, – hold on. Yeah. He doesn't he play in the don't, – Don't put LeBron James in the play, same sentence with Tom doesn't Brady. Doesn't he play in the AFC? Mm. Doesn't he play in the Leaston? Yeah. No, that's not the Leastern. You can say his division is AFC the Leastern. AFC least. Okay, I give you that. Yes. But the AFC is not least. The, not? the whole AFC, because you still have to run into Baltimore and Pittsburgh. And really? Some... When last time Baltimore made the playoffs? No, I'm just saying. They've been his nemesis. The Jets were his nemesis for Pitts- a while. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, he has Pittsburgh mm. number. All I'm, all I'm yeah. saying is skip. So, See, wait a second. Wait a that. second. Wait a second. He's trying to distract me from the point. Go ahead. Go ahead. Aaron Rodgers. Okay. NFC Championship games, he's made it to three, and he's won one. He's won and two in NFC Championship games. And by the way, the one he won was at Chicago against Caleb Haney. Mm-hmm. And Aaron Rodgers was pretty pathetic in that game by his standards because his QBR for that game was 58 on a scale of 0 to 100 because he threw no touchdowns with two interceptions that game and barely survived Caleb Haney to get to the one Super Bowl that he played in and won because Troy Polamalu had a pulled hamstring and could not run. And we know my friend Ryan Clark, the other safety, couldn't run healthy. So sorry about that, Ryan. Oh. But, but I'm just saying. But why you do that? Hold on, hold on. I'm, hold I'm on. just telling okay. you it was – it was easy. That was shooting fish in a barrel okay. for Aaron Rodgers. That's the only Super Bowl he's ever gotten to, and the only one he's won. If you don't mind me, if you don't mind me asking, as great as Tom Brady is, when his defense gave up 40 mm-hmm. points, what was the outcome? He had 505 yards. They had 634 his total coach yards. Coach failed to play Malcolm Butler one snap for no apparent reason, and gave up 41 points to the Eagles' backup quarterback. I know. And Tom Brady was throwing for a playoff record 505 yards, not a Super Bowl record, an all-time yes. playoff game yes. record. Yes. 505. Yes. Really? I re- hey, you, you remember the game, Skip? Wow. I remember hearing you talk about it. I was watching you that day. I said, I'm going to watch and see mm. what Skip has to say about mm. this. Aaron Rodgers lost a playoff game mm. in overtime to the Arizona Cardinals, 51-45. Mm. to 45. Mm-hmm. He threw for over 400 yards, had four touchdowns. Skip Baylor says if he's that guy, he has to win that game, Alex. Mm. I remember just like yesterday. Mm. Did you or did you not say you, that? You have to w- beat the Cardinals? Come on, you can beat the Arizona Cardinals. Well, you got to. You, huh? Hold on. Last I checked, Kurt Warner's in the Hall of Fame. Prior to Tom Brady, the last two. Oh, seasons. that was his first playoff game you're talking Who? about. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, yeah. the first one. But you say he's that yeah. guy. Because everybody was talking, everybody talking about you, but you say he's got to win mm. that game. Yeah. All I'm saying is, Skip, is that you need a defense. If your defense, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. As great as Tom Brady was, and he was all-time great that game. I mean, mm. he was dealing. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Once you fall behind, if you can't get stops, you mm. can't score enough points to catch up. Mm. And that's what Aaron Rodgers have to face. I mean, think about it. They gave up 37 at home to the Giants. They gave up another 30, 40 points mm-hmm. to San Francisco. You're not going to consistently win games if you're giving up high 30s, 40s in the NFL. I don't care how great your quarterback mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Ask Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. When you give up 41 points, what happens okay. to you? So I want to ask you and okay. all of your supporters okay. to let this sink in, okay. this number I'm about to give you. What you about to give me? In the fourth quarters – of Tom Brady's last three Super Bowls, mm-hmm. just in the fourth quarters alone, mm-hmm. he's 38 of 52. That's 73%. In just three fourth quarters, he's thrown for 421 yards. These are the last three Super Bowls that he's played in. Mm-hmm. Four touchdowns and no interceptions. Those are outrageously great clutch numbers in three games that hung in the balance throughout the fourth quarter. You cannot find that. That is off charts. That is not human. And and that's Super Bowl, right? That that is way out of Aaron Rodgers' league. That closes the case. This guy is so much better than Aaron Rodgers ever dreamed about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's Super Bowl, right? I just want to make sure I come to my notes. You know, I'm just. I'm talking about Seattle, Atlanta, Philadelphia against those three teams. And the. Legion of Boom was, I don't know, all-time top five. And Atlanta had the hottest playoff defense. And then yeah. Philly had a top five defense. And he shredded all three of okay. them in fourth quarters. If you don't mind me asking, against Seattle, how many points did 
The Patriots defense give up in the fourth quarter, if you don't mind me asking. I don't know. Zero. Yeah. In fourth quarter in overtime against the Falcons, how many points did the Patriots defense give up? Zero. Mm. Against the Eagles in the mm. fourth quarter, how many points did the Eagles score? I think they scored. S- six, I think. Mm, I don't know. So with that. I felt be- like they scored 21. So, so with that, okay, maybe. Mm. Okay, I'll give you 10. Mm-hmm. But that just goes to show you. See what happens? Zero points. Mm. Tom Brady could do his magic. Mm. Zero points. In overtime, Tom Brady could do his magic. Now, all of a sudden, they get to 10 points. There's no magic in the cape. Mm. Guess who's holding on to the football and keeping defense off the field in the fourth quarter? Tom Brady's thrown for 124 in the fourth against the Legion of Boom, and then he's thrown for 246 yeah. against Atlanta in fourth and overtime. 246 yeah. yards? And a lot of it is third down ball control. Yeah. Zing, first yeah. down. But here's the thing. Third and eight, but here, nine yards. But here's the thing, though, Skip. The difference between what Seattle and Atlanta did, what Philly was able to do and those teams weren't able to do, is that when they got the ball back in the fourth quarter, mm-hmm. they were able to get points. Hmm. See, Seattle couldn't get points. You got the lead at some point in time, you still got to score. Mm-hmm. Atlanta had the lead. Think about it. Atlanta had a 28-3 lead mm. with eight minutes left in the third quarter. They did. So, and then Tom Brady happened. So 23 minutes left, mm-hmm. they scored zero points. Yeah. Seattle, for 15 minutes in the fourth quarter, zero points. You see what happens? It doesn't matter how great Tom Brady is. Mm. If that defense doesn't come up with zero points, mm. they don't win. Time of possession, Brady. Okay, let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. How much time of possession did he have? They had 500 yards. You see what happens, Skip? Mm. If your defense can't stop anybody, even the great Tom Brady, mm. once he falls behind, can't mm. do enough to come from behind. While your coach is trying to hamstring Don't do that. He's trying to hamstring you by not playing Malcolm Butler. Okay, what about what about Wow, that's on. interesting. Your best he, defensive back and isn't playing. And he said, you know what, Tom? If you didn't throw that 80 plus yard pick six, mm. the Bradford, I, we'd have been straight. Mm. So oh. what does your restaurant do? It's it's all about serving only W's, right? Juicy Lucy's okay. in Minnesota for so, Tom Brady. Since Aaron Rodgers won an only Super Bowl, he's five and six in the postseason. Mm-hmm. Five and six, that means only five out of 11 times could he even gotten in the front door of your restaurant. That's not very good. You check out what his defense. Yeah. Hmm. What's his defense? Yeah. Well, look who he got to play. Look who he beat in those five games. He beat Joe Webb. Mm-hmm. He beat Kirk Cousins. He managed to escape because Des Bryant was ruled not a catch. He beat the Giants after Odell took all the receivers to train on he, South Beach on a he yacht. He beat the Giants. Y'all can't beat the Giants. Okay. The well, I'm you just saying. That. And then he, then Mason Crossbar saved Don't him do at that. Dallas. He Don't did. Do that. Don't do he that. He saved him at Jerry World with a 56-yard field goal and a 51-yard. These are the five. I just gave you five wins that were highly shaky. If you don't mind me asking, can you show, a, go, Aaron. Can you show a Tom Brady highlight in yeah. his first 10 years would I have Adam Vinatieri in there somewhere? No, but did he put him in position to kick the game winner? Yep, he You did. know what, Skip? I've been waiting for you to do this for the longest time, and I get out and walk him into this trap. No, well, I'm, so you I'm see, you, you see know, me? look at me. I'm sweating over You see here. what you do, Skip? I think we need to rap. No, 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 we don't need to rap. <laughs> I, I heard Healy say nothing. You see what you just did, Skip? Now, you keep saying that all Adam Vinatieri did was his job, but mm-hmm. Tom Brady put him in position. He did. All Ray Allen did was his job after LeBron put him in position with that 16-point fourth quarter and those three assists. LeBron missed the shot to tie the game and send it to overtime, and he missed it so badly. He LeBricked it so badly, it bounced long, oh. and Chris Bosh got the rebound all and kicked I'm, it to Ray all Allen. I'm saying is you LeBron, like that? Was that a call play? I'm all I'm they s- call that play in the huddle. LeBron, you missed the shot badly. Okay? All I'm saying, they were down by 10 in yeah. the fourth. Yeah. They scored 30 points in the fourth quarter. LeBron had Stop 16. It. He assisted on another six. Yeah. So 22 of the 30 points they had in the fourth yeah. had LeBron thumbprint on. Go. So he put Ray Allen in position way to, to do Ray Allen's job. Way to job. go, LeBron. All right, this way argument go, could go on yeah. forever, but we need to move on. One NFL owner made a controversial statement Mm-mm. yesterday. Mm-mm. We're going to discuss that next. No mercy. LaShawn McCoy was accused on Instagram early yesterday morning of domestic violence against his former girlfriend and abusing his son. McCoy said the acquisitions are, quote, completely false. Georgia police and the NFL are investigating a home invasion in which the woman was beaten and robbed of her jewelry. Her attorney says McCoy had given her the jewelry and previously made comments about wanting it back. Shannon, what is your reaction? Skip, I hope what the alleged victim's attorney is implying isn't true. Because if any of it is true, LaShawn McCoy, the least of his problems are playing in the NFL. He's going to jail. This is a bad look. Now, 
Skip, if you remember, and, and, and bear with me a little bit, LaShawn McCoy has an incident which he got into it, or his group got into it with some off-duty police officers mm -hmm. in a bar. In Philly. In Philly. Yep. There was also an alleged incident that they were on a party bus and a female didn't want water thrown on her. Yep. And allegedly, you know, someone threw her down and everybody pulled champagne mm -hmm. and they let off at a rest stop. Mm -hmm. And now this situation. At some point in time, LaShawn McCoy is going to have to change the way he do does business or change the people that are around him because he's going to start losing the benefit of the doubt. And that's not a very good thing. It's mm -hmm. almost like a Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston has lost the benefit of the doubt for me. Yep. And LaShawn McCoy is going to start, if this is, Skip, if this, this is horrible. Now, the, the, the Instagram post or what have on social media has been taken down. Mm -hmm. But this is not a very good look, not, for LaShawn, not only for LaShawn McCoy, but for the NFL, because they take these issues very, very serious since 2004. And I don't want to get into, well, this is worse than Ray Rice, or this is worse than Greg, uh, Greg Hardy. Domestic violence, put them all in one basket. Mm -hmm. It's all the same. Yep. But Skip, if this is true, not the, the, if any part of it, LaShawn McCoy is in a heap of trouble of anything that this attorney is implying is true. This is not a good look. And I know that he and this young, this young lady, I guess they're going through a very uh, acrimonious split. Yep. And it's a lot of he said, she said. He's and, tried to get her evicted for about two years right. through the court system. system. Mm -hmm. And whatever the case may be, Skip, mm -hmm. this doesn't look well. Mm -mm. Uh, I hope it works out for everybody involved. But looking at that picture, I don't know if you saw it, Skip, it was, it was, not, a very, it was not a very pretty picture. No. And it doesn't paint LaShawn McCoy. And... <sighs> They're not alleging he did it. What they're alleging and what she, the, the attorney, is alleging is that he had someone to do it, mm -hmm. which is equally because now it puts him in a situation because now he's conspiracy to the fact. Mm. So I know LaShawn a little. Mm -hmm. Spent a little time around him. He has a great personality, mm -hmm. big personality, great spirit to him, great spark to him. Makes me root for him mm -hmm. on the football field, not mm -hmm. off. But when he was just a little kid, his mother nicknamed him Shady because of his mood swings. Mm -hmm. And that nickname Stop. still fits <laughs> to this day uh -huh. because he does have his mood swings. And you're never quite sure what you, you're going to get from him. Mm -hmm. And he's been involved in too many quote-unquote shady situations. Mm -hmm. What was that about? Nothing has stuck so far. Don't know if this will, but all of it in total has distracted from the fact he's been a powerhouse on the football field. Yeah, he's over 10,000 yards rushing. Yeah, even just before the show, I'm looking at this thinking, wait a second, over the last eight years, nobody has run the ball for more yards in the National Football League than LaShawn McCoy. Mm -hmm. Last eight years? Right. That's more than Adrian Peterson or Frank Gore or go down the list. Right. This is eight years' worth. Yeah. But he's made six Pro Bowls. That's a lot. A lot. And he scored over the – this is over the last eight years. He has the most combined scrimmage yards, rushing, catching. And he's tied with Rob Gronkowski for the most combined touchdowns, obviously running and catching. Well – that's a lot. Yeah. So that's impressive. That's good enough. These numbers are good enough to at least get on the Hall of Fame ballot. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, because yeah. he's been, uh, I think the minimum is like, I think three Pro Bowls. Okay. So he has six. Six. He's led the league in Russia. Yeah. And, he's been an all-pro. And by the way, he's made the Pro Bowl the last five years yes. in, in his later running back right. life because he's, I think tomorrow he turns 30 years of age. Mm -hmm. And as you know, it starts to be diminishing returns. Right. But he looks like he's still going strong, right? Yes. Skip, what I try to tell guys is that, look, Skip, when you play football, football is a, is, is a business that you can get, you get paid to do damage to someone. And the thing that you have to be able to do is to turn that off. Skip, when I was younger, I had to be right. All the, on and off the field. I couldn't back down. You definitely couldn't back down on the field. But as you start to get older, you know what, Skip? I was like, I don't have to be right in this argument. It's okay. Let it go. Walk away. And I just hope, Skip, I just hope, I just hope that LaShawn would not put himself, because you stand to, to, to lose way, way more than you gain by getting this stuff back. Mm -hmm. Go through, the, just like you're trying to get her evicted, 
from the home, mm -hmm. go through the court system, and try to get the stuff back through that way. And either the judge or jury say yay or nay, and then you leave it alone. But you don't, Skip, this is not, this is not no hood. LaShawn. No. Dude, you're a multimillionaire. You well, don't we, think. We're still not sure about yeah, it. Yeah, but I'm saying. Yeah. Just, just go, just like you're trying to get evicted. If okay. it, you know, she said by the jury, because the, uh, the lawyer said, that's what her attorney said. Just go through the court system and let them handle it. Okay, so I'm going to ask you as a Hall of Fame member, is this a Hall of Famer to you? I think when it's all said and done, his, his, his numbers are going to stack up very favorable. Uh, uh. Does, I don't know if he has any playoff wins. Uh, he's 0-4 in the playoffs, and his yards have been, he's averaged 56 yards a game. So the, they're all wild card teams, three in Philly, one in Buffalo. Right. You, you'll remember the games, they had that wild card game at Dallas right. in 2009. And then out. remember on Aaron Rodgers' one Super Bowl right. run, he came to Philly and right. beat them. Yes. Remember Vic threw the interception Except at they, the they, end they, of the they, game. They, so that's one, another loss. They lost to Drew Brees with Nick Foles as the quarterback coming off his 27 yep. touchdowns to two interceptions yep. year at home. And then this last year they lost. Skip, with his Jackson. numbers, I mean, he's over 10,000 yards, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I think I glanced that he's over 10,000 yards rushing. And so he plays another two to three years. He could easily be 12, 13,000 yards. I think he's going to get serious consideration. Okay, but my point is, if, in fact, he gets suspended for... Oh, no, no, he ain't going. Okay, then it's no good. No, no, I'm, no, no, I'm, no, no, no. I'm making this point because I admire what he has done on the football yeah. field, but it's it's going to get undercut yeah. here. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Know? Especially especially yeah. now because they say they can use it. They've added that into the bylaws, whereas before you look outside, all you worried about what transpired on the field of play. Now they say you can go in the locker rooms. Now you can go into the sidelines. Now you can go off the field. Yeah. Put it like this. If they want you to get in, Skip, they'll overlook all this. So yeah. if Shady's numbers are so impressive, they have to overlook it. If he it. had Shannon Sharp's three Super Bowl rings, they might. Oh, it's a slam dunk. Started, okay. It'd be a slam dunk. Yeah. But, but he's got no playoff wins. Yeah. So that's probably not going to cut Skip, it. Skip, we got to rock. You and I both had a Mount Rushmore player. We know his history off the field. Mm. <laughs> so, but, it was, but his numbers were so out of the world, we, we you had no choice. Lawrence Taylor. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. But it's, this, Skip, you got to admit, but this is a bad look. This is a really, really bad look. And I just hope. He's had a bunch of bad looks. I just They've hope added up. None of it. I hope none of it's true. So do I. But where there's so much smoke, there's usually a little bit of fire. And him and mm -hmm. these incidents like yep. this. Mm. It's just tough because you immediately feel emotional about this horrible situation. Right. But you cannot jump to any conclusion. No. no until you have the facts, right. and that's the bottom line. Right. It's a horrible situation. We just hope that it does not involve him. Yes. And that's what we're going to leave it at. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Join us again at 9.30 a.m. Eastern on Monday for another full week of Undisputed. We'll see you then. Facts. Sports. One of one. one.